Hi everyone, welcome to the Hue virtual chat. It is a very hot and humid Tuesday here and we just had a parade of about 20 cars blaring their horns and of course it is another graduation, I guess virtually um, COVID-19 style. So yeah, it was kind of um, very emotional and seeing all the parents and everybody on the street waving as the cars went by. So sharing the love and hey, mentioning love, well that is our topic for today. I did some heavy research last night and I actually watched uh, The Best of The Bachelor and uh, it was the rerun of Ben Higgins' adventure. And I tell you, I don't know how so many people fall in love on that show, but we all know the track record. That necessarily isn't how true love really works. So we're gonna find out with all of our lovely ladies joining into the chat, let's bring them on in and Ask the big question, how is love during COVID-19? Good morning, everybody. Hi. Hey, hi, Natalie. Oh, gosh, it's so good to see you. And Susie. Hello, Susie. Hey, we just saw, I had a graduation parade go by my house, and I was just saying how it was kind of a little emotional. You know, the parents were waving, the cars are all decorated, there's people standing on the streets you know, waving as uh, the, you know, the kids went by. So I know that's a real different time, real different time. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna open it up. Um, I confess, I watched the best of the Bachelor moments last night. Don't know why, but I did. <laughs> you know, just doing some heavy research for our topic today, which is love. And uh, oh my God, I, like, how does that show last this long and then they're talking about another like new season so how are they even filming it during all of this um i have no idea <laughs> i can't answer anything about it i've actually never watched an episode of that show oh really oh no you can't do it no you can't do it no. So what if your daughter the idea, the idea no the idea of of uh, you know amazing accomplished women lining up for one guy just does not work for me at all there's so many other things to do with life yeah oh uh, i know it's and it's just like i was thinking all of the kind of like the dates and the you know the whatever suite i'm going like how can they even do yeah. that now? like well i'm guessing it was filmed a long time ago right oh yeah well like, it couldn't have been recent no right. no but they're announcing. Or, <laughs> sorry, or did you mean like like morally? How can they do that? Yeah. Like how can they allow that to happen? <laughs> it's a new but, world. That's that's how. Yeah. Uh, well, and I everybody, I want to introduce um, Natalie Reimer Anderson, and yeah. it's great to see you. And she you. is a self love coach. So come on, Natalie, spill the beans on. <laughs> Well, you know, this is a fascinating social experiment. I find this whole Bachelor Bachelorette series mm -hmm. and I've been sort of following it for years, but mostly just from friends who are absolutely addicted to it and even have like parties where they they watch all together. Um, I don't know, like I'm, I'm a student of, of people and and what makes people tick. So anthropologically, this is an incredibly fascinating experiment. I thought a while back that it probably has had its time and it could probably be retired, but apparently not because it's still really high in the ratings. And I think it signals to something in our culture of like just wanting to do whatever we can to find love and then mixing that together with like the narcissism of being on screen and like that sort of privilege of like spilling everything to the world. I think there's some, some real weird dynamics going on there, but to each their own. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Welcome. So I know we're talking about you. <laughs> well, okay, so I'm still on this topic. Like, okay, Susie and Charlotte, too. Uh, like, the women on there, uh, and we all say, like, okay, so, like, they were just picked because they really have, like, okay, for the lack of a better word, overbearing or overpowering personality, but I, I just, yeah. Oh, you're muted. It, it makes for great TV. TV. Yeah, right? there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Stereo yeah. makes for great big TV. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you'll find too over the like the series and same thing with Survivor. It becomes like caricatures of a certain uh, 
human personality. So they, they look for those people that will make for great TV, absolutely. And do you think, okay, now into the world of dating, the real world with normal people, I mean, finding love. <laughs> Everyone laughs. <laughs> for, for all of those single women and single men, what is it like? Or has, has that passion dissipated with everything that has been happening? Is love important? <laughs> Anybody? I'll, I'll step back from that because I've been married for 25 years and I'm so not aware of the dating scene lately, except for the swiping part that, that apparently is happening. <laughs> but I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Corey, Amy? <clears throat> well, um, I have been single for nine years. So, uh, but it was a choice for me. Um, nine years ago, I ended a horrible relationship, uh, a long line of horrible relationships. And so I made a vow to myself nine years ago to not seek love outside of myself until I learned how to fall in love with myself. And I thought it was going to take a couple of months, but here we are nine years later. And this whole pandemic thing, I think, is an opportunity for us to get really crystal clear about what we're looking for, you know? And it, it is an opportunity. I met somebody a couple of weeks ago, and it was fun. It was, it brought back some juice to my life, you know, even though it was just meeting somebody and, and that was like a soundboard. But uh, being single these days is the pits. <laughs> Unless you're into that internet dating stuff, which I'm not, um, yeah, I just kind of stay in my lane and, and hope that maybe along my daily path, I'll meet somebody. But I'm not into this looking for love, nor am I into watching any of those shows about people looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Amy? No, I agree with Corey. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Long time no see. Um, I absolutely agree. I think um, there are, we tend to, we, we tend to, we tend to not think, we tend to think that love is something that we seek elsewhere. It's not something that um, other people can give back to us. And really it's important to love, if you don't love yourself and if you don't um, do things for yourself, if you're not even happy being you as is, no one else is gonna be able to make you happy. And I think I can speak um, from experience because growing up, that was one thing, like my family lacked a lot of like, that, um, uh, th that love that I was looking for from like my parents. Um, and so I was like looking elsewhere. Okay, maybe my boyfriend will give that to me. Oh yeah, he, he does. He will say good morning um, to me. Um, we do have family dinners. Like we actually sit down and have a family dinner. And those are really the things that I was longing for growing up. But it, did, but it didn't, it made me happy at that point. But then I got to a point where I was like thinking like, well, is that it for me? Like just these little um, um, acts of services and that's, and, that's, and that's love? And it wasn't. So I, it's within and you really, really need to be happy with yourself and, and feel empowered and inspired and everything before you can find that partnership. And that's what I'm kind of looking for right now is that partnership. Someone that can walk in tandem side to side where we can hold each other accountable mm -hmm and walk down this path. Beautiful. Wow. Me. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little long. <laughs> so for all those young men out there that think they can walk in tandem with Amy, good luck. <laughs> so Susan, Sprinters. Uh, yeah, um, you know, it, yeah, you, you know, you've got your, your kids now and uh, well, you know, you've got an old you know, son that's in his teens and stuff and you know, first love and whatever. I know they're, they're a little bit young, but you know, it's a whole new world for these kids too. You know what, it is, but uh, as you know, I always talk about how I talk to my kids and we've always talked about things like relationships and even just for friendships, because I think most 
most relationships start out as friendships, right? So you want to know what those boundaries look like and what you're looking for in other people. What, what kind of people do you surround yourself with, right? And, um, you know, as we get to those teen years and these kids are growing up online and seeing all kinds of things, we talk about things like respect and um, consent and things that you need to keep private. You know, intimate relationships should be private. They're not things that you need to put on display for other people. And that that sacred bond that you create with somebody else that you have a love relationship with, those are that's a thing that you should cherish. You know, and that goes back to things like um, locker room talk and trash mm -hmm. talk and all those things. I do not want my sons participating in anything like that or my daughter or anything like that. And I think that talking about that and exemplifying those levels of respect and even how you talk to your partner and to your friends, they hear and they see that. And it's really important to model that positive behavior for them. No, oh, no, no doubt. Well, and for Charlotte, you kind of got this long distance and then it was separation too there for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, my partner lives, uh, he's retired. He lives at the lake. So um, we, uh, we play the back and forth game. Um, but you know, a lot of what Amy was saying about that, he, you know, he walks along beside me and, and, and I walk along beside him in, in his journey. He's, he's taking on a new career path and uh, really supporting him on that. Well, uh, I, I am here in Winnipeg um, and I was looking at, um, you know, the internet problems that we have when we're at the lake and a big part of why I'm in Winnipeg is because I am, you know, I've got really good internet at the house and, and I spend my day on Zoom um, doing training. So it's, it's balancing that world. But for us, it's a lot of, um, you know, communicating through FaceTime, you know, and checking in and, and we continue our conversation throughout the day. So it's just, you know, popping in for two seconds to, you know, tell him what's going on and, and he, he with me. So we're still feeling very much um, part of each other's lives, but, you know, physically, you know, separated from distance. Um, and I just wanted to add one thing about The Bachelor, because I'm guilty when, when Susie was like, I've never watched it. I actually did watch it. Um, a friend of my daughter, my oldest daughter's um, cousin was on it, the, the Canadian female Bachelor. It was, he was one of the guys on it. So I was watching it because it's, you know, it was so-and-so's cousin and uh, really following, like, what is this? Like, I was just, like, horrified as, you know, <laughs> Susie is, because I'm like, to my girls, like, you were never going on this show. But what they started to tell me about is, you know, the, the re rationale behind why some women go on that show. And they're like, mom, it's all about getting Instagram followers and then becoming a brand ambassador. And look at how many, and, and so we started to study how, you know, how these girls started off with very few followers and then who jumped in, you know, in popularity and, so it's that world that, you know, us at a certain age really don't understand, but, um, and for so many women, they want that um, employment or whatever on being a brand ambassador for really doing not much, like, which makes no sense to us as well, too. So it's just, a, it's, so I, it's, I don't know if it's about love as much as a, a career path. So yes, um, it's, it's to parlay something into something else. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But the idea that you're actually there, like the, the building a brand thing and building, you know, a celebrity presence, I can get behind way more than waiting in line for some guy. Like, I don't get that at all. Wanting to, wanting to get exposure for you and your brand, okay, I can get behind that. But yeah, the other part, just yawn. I don't get it at all. Yeah. Natalie, um, to you, uh, to Charlotte's point on being on Instagram and having followers and how important it is to, to be out there and be connected. Um, a, a lot of that, I guess, too, is a lot of self, um, self hope. And I'm, my question is, then how do you find self love? Like Amy spoke so eloquently about mm -hmm. loving yourself and it's kind of like an oxymoron. Okay, I have all these people that love me and so I should love, or you know, I must, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. love. Yeah, you know, social media is a, it's a, a bit of a tricky world and it's a place where we have to um, especially come back to ourselves and really ground in what our truth is personally. And I would say like, um, I, can, I can speak for myself in that, you know, like I, I, I came into social media late in the game. It, you know, I was already in my 30s when 
um, the internet was born, you know, so this is, this is, I, I feel like I knew who I was. And I, one of the things that I see happening a lot is, you know, we are continually outsourcing our love and approval to other people and to likes and to, you know, how, how much our post gets shared. And that is like, when that starts very, very young, that can be a very, very destructive thing because all of your self-worth is then contingent on, did somebody notice you? Did, especially did, did those people that you um, place your value in notice you? Like, um, I don't know. I just think that uh, kids today have it very, very difficult because they haven't necessarily known their life without um, who they are in reflection of the social media game. Mm -hmm. And so as, you know, as a parent myself too, I've really tried to protect my kids from even engaging with social media and just like knowing who they are in their small collective of friends in the present moment. And then later, if it does become a vehicle, like for me, I use it for my employment, right? For I, this is how I get my clients by putting myself out there is then you begin to put yourself out there and create a brand on already knowing who you fundamentally are. And I don't know if that can happen until later in our, in our, you know, I'd say for me, it happened in my late twenties when I really grounded into who I was and, and didn't need that, that sense of approval from others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a lot out there. How about mm -hmm. you, Cindy? Yeah, with your kids. Um, yeah, you know, uh, we talk about that a lot. And, um, you know, and I think I've said this before in our other discussions about this is that, um, you know, everyone says like you have to love yourself first and you have to get your stuff together. And it's just like, you know what, I don't necessarily believe all that because there are so many people I know who are great people who just haven't met the right person who haven't you know clicked with somebody it has nothing to do with whatever they're missing or their lack of self-love per se sometimes it's just timing you know and mm -hmm. to try and force something or to try and talk yourself into something I think is a mistake I think that you know that love relationship whatever that looks like should come naturally and if you don't feel good about it at whatever stage then that's when you need to start questioning what am I doing this for and you know I think a lot of us, perhaps in you know our current friend circle, especially during this pandemic time, have seen some people realize they're not as happy as they thought they were because they had to spend so much time together. And you know, it's one of those things where, you know, um, changing your scenery sometimes can help. But when you can't change your scenery and you're forced to cocoon with somebody who is not an ideal match for you, who is not a good partner for you, who does not fill your bucket, as we like to say, harsh realities come to the forefront and you have to deal with those things. And kids are feeling that too because they're living at home in these situations and they are aware that something is not right or not all is not right and well. Yeah. And that's definitely uh, something to think about too. I mean, oh, well, Corey, you, I mean, you kind of mentioned, you know, that you had some, you know, rough relationships or, in, and you recognize that and now, nine years later, here you are, you know, I, I, I assume and I know you that are, you are very happy. Uh, what was, what was the trigger or what was the moment where you said, this is not happening? Well, for me, it was a, a long line of bad relationships where I was sacrificing all of my needs for the needs of somebody else and trying to live up to an external expectation that I had borrowed from other people. And I realized that I was all facade and not much content. And at the same time, I was starting my yoga practice. And yoga talked a lot about, well, there's this idea of scriptural love, how to build love on the inside. And I thought, oh my goodness, maybe that's something I want to try because it doesn't, love is not dependent on another person, place, or thing. We can have a love relationship with ourselves. We have love relationships with our children and our families. And I think when we're talking about love, a lot of us instantly go to romantic love. But for me, all my relationships were floundering because I wasn't sure who I was. And so spending time to get to know myself 
I started taking myself out on dates, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. Um, and yeah, over nine years, things, things just began to evolve and change. And, and over the last nine years, I've become very happy, very grounded. And all my relationships, my family, my, with my daughter, my friends, they're all so much more meaningful now. And so the romantic love will show up, I have no doubt, whenever it's supposed to happen. But I had to make the commitment to myself first to heal myself and to heal all the damage that I had done to myself over the years by choosing the wrong man. So who would be Mr. Right for you? For me? Yeah. Oh, um, that's, <laughs> that's a big question. You know, for me, I, uh, I feel the energy of the person who I'm supposed to be with. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not actively looking. I think that's one of the things for me. Um, I need somebody who can rise to the occasion of being themselves, who's self-sufficient, who's confident, and who's got their own passion and purpose in life. And like Amy was saying, just walking next to somebody who who helps you rise to the best version of yourself. Wow, it looks like uh, it's going to be a competition for that, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I hope so. Line them up. Maybe I need to go on The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like Highlander, like there can be only one. <laughs> Pretty yeah. sure there's lots of soulmates out there. Oh, yeah. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Natalie, again though too, I mean, listening to Corey's story, uh, for women and men too that may be in this position, like Susie had mentioned, uh, what kind of advice or kind of ways could people think about to diffuse situations too as well right or to you know what I mean uh, to diffuse the situation uh, the, the tension to you know if they are in a relationship that sucks and well yeah you know I actually work with a lot of clients that are in certain stages of their marriage or their primary relationship that are, are really struggling with them um, whether they should stay or not it's funny how that's happened recently and it's not dissimilar to, you know, my um, not too recent history with my own husband. And like I mentioned, we've been married for 25 years now. I was, I met him when I was 18. So one of the things that um, really helped me, um, my husband and I are in an amazing place right now. We made it through some rocky waters and we are like absolutely hundred percent committed and in love. And so one of the things that, that really drove home for me was it's not 50-50 in a relationship, it's 100-100. You are both equally 100% um, responsible for what you bring into that relationship. And I have found in my life, and this goes back to that point of like, do we need to love ourselves first? Well, when I was 21, I did not love myself. And yet I found this man who I was meant to be with, and I know this to be true now, in hindsight with these 25 years that have passed, is just understanding that there's so much soul growth work that can happen in the container of a committed relationship. And when you have that, um, that strong fundamental, like we're in this together, then you can, you know, you can like, have all your you can work out your shadow stuff you can see all those things that that irritate you about that person and still you stand in and you love because that's a commitment that you can make so love is not some you know i think in our culture especially with like the bachelorette type stuff we have this assumption that love is this just this fairy wand that gets you know and and magically love appears and it's always about romance i can tell you that a committed loving relationship is the grittiest toughest thing that we can go through to truly stand in and introspect and look at ourselves and what we're bringing to that relationship that we need to resolve and having that context and container that person reflecting back to us what we can um what we can learn about ourselves in that is it it's it's amazing it's um soul work that that it can also happen individually but when you have that with a with a soulmate it's, it's a really beautiful thing. So that would be something I would consider is what lessons is this person bringing 
for you to learn and providing for you, almost like a hired gun. Like you're saying, hey, give me your worst and we'll figure this out. Now, that's not to say that, you know, there are times when relationships are absolutely toxic and they are not meant to be um, continued. And that's things that are important to explore also. Wow. Well, Charlotte, uh, you have you have Doug, your partner. It's just Doug, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, what was it about Doug that you knew? That he um. Well, you know, it's going back to, you know, Susie's comment. He, he was a friend first. Um, so he, um, I'd known him for 25 years. Um, and uh, he, he's seen me through my best and he's seen me through my worst. Um, so it was a, it, when it became more than just a friendship, it was, it was such an easy transition because um, of the relationship we had. And, and, uh, you know, I, I to talk to my my daughters and uh, my, one of my daughters, um, a, a friend that's been a friend of hers for you know quite a while has you know told her you know his feelings for her and she's like I don't want to lose him as one of my best friends and and juggling that that transition of you know do I want to take this step because I really really like him as a friend and so you know we've spent some time talking about that and and, and ultimately it'll be you know her decision which way she goes I'm I'm kind of waiting. Um, I was teasing her actually. I'm like, you should come on the show today. She's like, you're. Sh we have a thing about in my business called you're shooting. We don't shoot on each other. And uh, she's like, you're shooting on me right now. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But um, uh, yeah, no, I have I have a really good man and uh, and a really good friend. And um, so I feel very blessed. And and I'm I'm super excited to meet you, Natalie. Um, I've set up a few of my friends, and uh, they've always said to me, you should be in the setting up dating business and I'm like no I have no interest but uh, I'm really have interest in what you do because uh, uh, the excitement that I've had in um, I set up my cousin and uh, I remember saying to him I found somebody for you to date um, and I, my words to him were don't screw this one up <laughs> and uh, they started texting because um, she was traveling a lot and uh, so he, he really feels that that texting piece before they actually met was so important to uh, when they finally got together because um, they had already kind of been through lots of stuff in, in, in that superficial texting world. But um, um, so they're engaged now and, uh, and at their engagement party, they were toasting me. I, w I couldn't be there. I was out of town. But um, and then I, you know, I've set up a couple of his other friends over the years. But it's funny when as an outsider, you see where two people can get together because you just see qualities of each, of each of them that, you know, would be great together. And, and it's fun when it works. Um, I've also set up one that didn't work out so well and get teased about that. So. <laughs> well, as long as they're all friendly, right? And yeah. they all laugh about it. That's, that's really yeah. great. But can um, I add, can I add that? Um, I was just going to add a little bit about what Natalie was saying about, you know, those, those toxic relationships. And I, and I know, um, you know, Amy and I have spent a lot of time supporting other women who've been in, in relationships like that. And um, um, it, so often it takes so long for their head to get around that, um, you know, maybe this isn't the best place for me to be. Um, and again, holding that space for them to explore, um, you know, what, what they feel is right for, that, for themselves and really taking that apart of, um, I know in, in some cases, women's like not wanting to break up their family. Um, and, but the relationship, you know, as Natalie talked about was, is so toxic that it, you know, it, it's destroying, it's destroying the, the wife and the mother as well. And, and um, being very mindful and, and respectful of, you know, supporting them through that decision because it, it it's, can be very, very hard. So. Yeah. No. And I just want to make light to uh, Amy's having a wonderful pop up of it coming up on uh, Sunday, right, Amy? You want to yeah, talk? Yeah, yeah. And this is like, I think this is like, not, I wouldn't say a segue, but it, it's, it encompasses like essentially like what we do. Like we want our fundraisers to be fulfilling, not only for your mental health, but also for your physical health as well. 
and then just understanding where the two are conjoined um, and using that to our advantage can lead to a better understanding of just like who we are um, and ultimately come to the place like just to love ourselves and really identify like our core values um, in terms of what we're looking for in life and even for like a partner right and I think that's like the that's kind of like the the tunnel that we kind of get into where we, where we get stuff we're trying we're dating different people but then like do we do we recognize that that these are lessons that are popping up and um are we fully recognizing these lessons and really learning from them and bringing it into the other relationship and then like through like our fundraiser again we have we have natalie this 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 weekend um and just like providing these tools and resources um for for people like things that i wish i had growing up or wish i knew growing up right yeah, and it's a, I love it because it's all a restart, hitting restart. I wish we, it was just a button that we could hit, <laughs> restart. Um, and because restart means in so many ways, so many different things to people. And uh, especially now living in this pandemic. And it's interesting. I mean, how do you ladies feel? Uh, restaurants are open for 100, at 100%. Um, bowling lanes, uh, every, you know, pretty much everything is normal and schools are back September 8th but they just said schools open September 8th no what are the restrictions or whatever every other province it's like half size classrooms social distancing um, yeah yeah the details are still to follow on that so we don't really know what it's gonna look like yet we just know that the date is September 8th and you feel you're gonna feel comfortable with the kids no. coming back yeah. <laughs> No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, I need I need far more details before I can feel even remotely comfortable because I, like you said, you know, using the phrase like things are acting normal. Yeah, no, I'm not acting normal at all, actually. And we just had two more cases in the province of pe from people who did not self-isolate after they were told they should have. And I can't I can't rely on everybody else to be safe, so I have to be extra vigilant in how I do things and how I, you know, put my kids out there and put everything out there. So it's it's definitely still scary as far as I'm concerned. And with summer coming and people are going to be traveling interprovincially and things like that, we have to be really careful. Still really careful. Yeah. No. And I mean, what are things like out at the lake um, for yourself, Charlotte? I know, Susie, you're at the lake. What is it like there? Beautiful? It is beautiful, but we are in a part that is still in phase one. So things are not necessarily open here. We have not been out at all. We, I brought all our groceries from home and um, the local little grocery store, even up at the top here is not open because again, it's still phase one. So we have been, you know, I don't want to say confined. That's not the word, but we've been staying on the property and that's it. We haven't been you know, gallivanting like we would be as, you know, normal summer tourists kind of thing. And that's to keep, you know, again, that physical distancing and to keep ourselves safe here. Still lots of hand washing, still lots of wiping down of surfaces and doorknobs and things like that. And just being really safe and um, uh, what's the word, conscientious. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And how is it like for you, Charlotte, when you go up? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, my friends, um, I, I, my uh, Doug hangs out with a, a small group of people. They've all been kind of self-isolating. It's, it's his little community. And when I show up, I'm always like the outsider. And the first thing is like, who, where have you been? And for some reason, it's, it's Costco seems to be a hot spot that no one wants to see me if I've gone to Costco. But they also want me to go shopping for them to Costco. Um, <laughs> so it's being really mindful of when you consider going out to the restaurants and, and places that it's not just about you, it's about your little community and what people are comfortable um, with you doing. Because it's, um, so it's conversations that, you know, my daughter and I have because um, she lives here with me um, in Winnipeg. Um, and then when I go out to that, that world in Kenora, um, and, and I'm like, uh, Susie, I don't go into Kenora. I buy everything, um, you know, in Winnipeg because I don't want to be the person that brought it to Kenora. Like, cause it's, you know, it's a small community. They can't handle a huge outbreak. Um, they're being very careful and cautious. Um, and, okay. and just one more quick story. My mom was down in Florida, um, and she returned to Canada and she's in quarantine and, uh, she lives in Kenora. 
And I'm like, mom, you can't, you have to stay put. And somebody last um, week got fined in Kenora because they're checking on her. Um, they went out on for a boat ride and um, they got slapped with a huge fine when they weren't in the house where they were supposed to. And everybody in the boat got fined too. So I was really happy to hear that because, uh, you know, it's a real strong message for people to uh, respect that 14 day quarantine. Um, yeah, no doubt. We would love to have your mom on. I would love to be here now that she's here. Yeah, I'll have to, uh, I'd have to, when she's out of quarantine, I'll have to go and do that. She's, she doesn't do well with uh, computers, so, but. Yeah, uh, I mean, great to see some of her artwork too. Yeah, I she's an amazing artist and, and she's funny and um, she spent all winter down in Florida. Like I've mentioned, you know, before my, my brother lives down there and, um, so she's got this kind of crazy Florida perspective of, you know, what self, um, what socially distancing was, because she's like, we're all being careful. Um, but, you know, she's still getting her nails done and her hair done. Like, it's a different world down there compared to what Manitoba is. So. And then, yeah, we can see how the cases are. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Well, and Corey, I know that your, your family goes off to the lake, too. I guess it's been a little bit of a, a refuge, too, in all of this. Yeah, we, uh, we leave from our driveway and we show up at the marina, load the boat, and we're off to an island. So we don't see anybody. We don't stop. We just go straight from here to the island and it's awesome. It's uh, awesome to be away from all of this and to be isolated and in nature where everything just feels so complete. Yeah. Well, I know, I guess we are appreciating those, those moments. Natalie, I was just wondering too, in all of this isolation, I mean, the hum we are human and it is innate in us to have that personal touch, to have, to hold someone, to have that human connection. Mm -hmm. How do you think that all will change with all of this? Because we're even right now, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Susie and, and, and even through myself, like we were invited to an event that would be the first to have a hundred people. And we were going, okay. And then when we kind of thought about it, mm, no, it's not okay. Um, I will pass on that. But uh, the human mm. touch, being able to embrace somebody again, even, yeah, shaking hands or giving mm. a hug to someone. How is that going to change the whole human psyche? Uh, well, I think, yeah, I think we're already seeing signs of it. And I think, um, like I can see that there's a lot of people suffering from not being able to have the human contact and even just being in each other's heart space, mm -hmm. right? And this specific six and 6.5 feet is, it just keeps us outside of each other's toroidal field, which is, it's interesting because we need to be connected in that way in order to, to, to feel that from one another. And like with this whole COVID thing, and I may be of a little bit of a different mind than others and I'm being absolutely conscientious and following all the rules. So I'd just like to start by saying that it, you know, at some point, human contact and that ability to be with one another, this, we, we are, we are swimming in pathogens at all times. And we have collectively decided to make one pathogen um, the focus of our attention right now. And that has really contributed to a lot of fear. If you recall, um, just over two weeks ago, we had a gathering in Winnipeg of 15,000 people and we have two new cases to show for it. So as far as like wanting to just allay some of that fear that, that although coronavirus is a real thing, there is a, a, a natural immunity that occurs when we're out in the sunshine there's even an immunity that occurs when we are in one another's presence and feel that love energy coming off of one another. So, you know, what do we need? Kids especially need contact with other children. They need to play in the dirt. They need to be exposed to pathogens. That's how our immune system works. So um, looking at like, where can I be kind and conscientious to others who are maybe compromised or have that fear while also being connected to humankind it's very very important at this point yeah well amy you agree um oh, 50 50 but yeah I, I think you need to 
you need to be mindful when you do go out. Like even with like Alyssa taking her to the park, sometimes it irritates me because like I want her to go out and have fun. But then yet I, I'm like looking at that play stretch and like there's other kids all climbing and all touching. Like, well, <laughs> it doesn't make me, I, I, I'm not settled. I'm not like a hundred percent. And I, I think we just like, we do other things now. We have parents that were in a group and then we're, we're social distancing and we have like this agreement in place. Whereas, okay, well, the, our kids, like these five families, they can play together like for the summer. And then we'll take kind of turns in like taking them out, activities and whatnot. So that they still have that social interaction and they're not just like on their iPads. Yeah, yeah. And Corey, how about for your daughter? How is she coping through all of this? Uh, I don't know. Like, as a 19-year-old, I think she's having a difficult time. She's an introvert. So her friend circle is naturally very, very small. When we were just talking, I was thinking more about my dad mm -hmm. at Riverview because I went to see him on Father's Day. And when he saw me, he was like running at me with his arms wide open, because we haven't hugged since March 27th. And, uh, and I had to say, Dad, I can't hug you. And the look on his face went from like elation of seeing me, I felt his heart just like close. And it broke my heart. It actually made me cry that I wasn't able to hug my own dad who just has no way of understanding through his dementia what's currently happening. And so I struggle with this one. And I think we all have to come with our own personal understanding and agreements. But man, I really, I really want to hug my dad. <laughs> and so I, in, in, Every other day, I hug my mom and I hug my daughter a ton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, those are, those are heartbreaking moments and I don't know. Yeah, I mean, even a simple handshake, it's, it'll be all, it'll be so different. So Amy, I wanna get back to your event. So it's happening on Sunday, correct? Yeah. Sunday, 28th at 10.30 in the morning, oh my goodness. <laughs> 10.30 to 12.30, it's two hours. Um, the first 25 people, actually, yeah, the first 25 people will receive their swipe bag and their freshy lunch and crank energy bars, but that's already like gone. Uh, tickets are still available because it is, we're doing the virtual YouTube live. Um, and they're $25 and it's in support of the Shameless Circle. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's such a different dynamic. I'm used to like the, the again interaction, connection, having a venue, and this time around, I'm, I, I am a little frustrated. <laughs> it, it, yeah. No, it's a, um, it's different, but I, you know, I think that it is right now the new norm. Uh, mm -hmm. Even you know having these chats, I mean, it's amazing because I can meet so many incredible people. But you know, I do miss it being sitting you know, in the same room and, and, you know, sharing each other's stories. And also, Natalie, you're right. It's the energy now. Do you mm -hmm. find um, the human energy different a little bit? I certainly feel it when I go into a grocery store. Yeah, there's, there's definitely just a blanket of fear that's kind of overlaying everything. And um, like, I even see that, that especially with, um, the mask wearing now we're we're covering up our smile we're covering up that plate that that way that we greet one another and so um you know i've been trying really hard and, and asking my my clients and other people to do the same is to to make eye contact with strangers if you're not wearing a mask make sure that you're smiling because these little things these little gestures go a long way when we can't hug people we can't shake hands just like that human connection that the facial expression is so you know, if we're going to turn the tides of, of like, if this is be going to become, and I hate the phrase, but the new normal, we still have to hold on to our humanity. We can't be fearful robots out there afraid to make eye contact. So it's really important. Just those little things, those little gestures that make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. You agree, Charlotte? I do. We talk about, you know, getting our human back on and just being real. And uh, I like what Natalie said, making the eye contact. Um, I tend to talk to people um, more so in, when I'm out in, in grocery stores. But I did have, I, I, you know, I was thinking of Corey's words of not hugging um, 
her dad and I totally get that because you don't want to be the one that gave COVID to your dad like you know or into Riverview but I um I was in a Safeway the other day and I ran into a mom that um I've worked with um she comes to our our parent support group and she was she was not in a good space when I saw her and you know there's all these people around and Safeway practicing social distancing and I at that moment I just said to her can I give you a hug and she said, please. And so, you know, there we were in Safeway, you know, and, and she just kind of, you know, sh like she was not in a good space. And then the eyes around me were like, oh my God, what are you doing? And I just said, I, you know, and, and um, you know, I shared it with my family after I said, okay, guys, I just want you to know I hug somebody in Safeway and I'm a hugger and I always ask and, and they were okay with it, but you know, it was something that she needed. Um, you know, she's been in isolation and, um, and we talked about it after because she came on um, our our parent support group that night, and um, and it was all about that human piece. And and uh, anyway, so sometimes you have to make that choice, I think, or at least I did. So, well, but you know what? It makes you feel better too. Really, it does. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I know. It's terrible, really. To think that a simple human gesture like a hug can seem like crying. But yeah. It's really terrible, but uh, so, anyways, ladies, um, Amy. For more information on your on your event, they can go to your website. Yes, uh, I am loveproject.ca. Okay, write it down in the chat room, and we'll share it with everybody. <laughs> yes, so so good to see you again, Natalie. And we'll see you again on Thank Sunday. Thank you. Yes, and thanks, Charlotte, for joining. And hopefully, Kirsten can join us next week again. Yes. And yeah. so good to see you, Corey. And thank you, Susie, wherever you are. I know you're at the lake, so we forgive you. Her Wi-Fi is not very good, she said. But uh, anyways, um, we'll all be here next week. It'll be interesting. We'll be talking with a health advocate that works in the Winnipeg School Division number one. So that was like, on. I guess we'll wait and see what the whole regulations are when the schools open. Topic will be, are you ready to send your child to school or not? And uh, yeah, and then hopefully the doctor that uh, she cracked the fever, I guess, that comes with COVID. And she's a doctor at uh, St. Boniface Hospital, so we're hoping that she can join us too and give us a little bit more inside look on the ever, ever answering um, question, will there be a vaccine and when is that vaccine coming? So we'll have more on that and we'll see you next Tuesday. And have a lovely week, okay? Enjoy the great weather. And Thanks, stay Tracy. Take care. Okay, thank, thank you. Bye-bye.